So I got a call from Joel pretty shortly after, you know, we decided we weren't doing Einheit anymore. He said, oh, I want to keep doing this, you know, let's have a new band. I want to call it Silkworm. I don't know. I don't know where he got it. I don't know why he thought it was a good name for a band. Thinking about a, a, a bug that eats, like, garbage and turns it into something that you make, you know, like the finest clothing out of it. That's good. You know, I, I don't know. It worked. I thought I thought it worked anyway. There was a different ethos at play in the 80s. And, and for people like those guys, you know, like The Worm and, and you know, like me and my brother and like a, other, a lot of other bands who, um, you know, finally got to the point where we could start making records in the early 90s. When I think about it now, it seems like they came out of the indie rock that I listened to in college in the 1980s and almost representing this cohort, not quite a generation, but a cohort that, that comes like 10 years after the beginning of something. And so like just young enough to have heard it before and, 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 and had it kind of seep into them as, as teenagers. For me, if there was like uh, American hardcore of the 80s, and then there was uh, Homestead, SST, uh, Dinosaur, Sonic Youth, uh, maybe Mud Honey, sound, early sub pop, and then there was like the next wave was like uh, bands like Silkworm and, and Pavement and uh, Super Chunk. They were obviously fans of Homestead and SST and they started a band based on that, um, which we did too.